Hi everyone. Hope you are all doing well. And um, I'm really happy to continue teaching um, Falling Christ lessons involving our feet or focusing on our feet. Uh, I just finished um, rehearsal with the company here of Curious Nature here in Bremen, Germany. And um, yeah, I'm just every day realizing how important it is to find the ground and to find energy, um, power, which eventually gives us grace, but how to find power from the floor and uh, from our feet. So today I'm really excited to share this lesson with you. And uh, with this lesson, um, yeah, it is, um, you can really do some very gentle and, again, small movements. Um, so if you just have your palm to palm or a palm on a table, and just think about lifting a little bit of the heel of your palm and then let it go. Do this a few times. Yeah, so just the beginning of the movement, you see how your elbow might lift, your shoulder might need to lift a bit. So we're interested in what we need to do throughout all of ourselves um, in order to lift something very delicately and then place it down. So I think um, I had a wonderful, uh, I got a wonderful email from a, a woman um, in her 80s who um, just loved one of the, these feet lessons. And um, we both agree that Feldenkrais is just amazing for a lot of the um, elderly or people who are more experienced in years. And so, because with this lesson, I think it's one of those lessons where you can do very quietly lying in, in bed, a firm bed, and just listening how the little, um, a small movement of your foot will have um, some ripple effect, some resonance throughout all of you. So before we start, um, if you feel like it, then you can leave a message, uh, comment to see, check in how you are today, and then see if that will be different, um, if something new will be learnt afterwards, after this lesson, yeah. So perhaps let's start lying on our backs and just allow yourself to listen to how you are lying on the floor. We will be lying on our left side today and working with our right foot. Um, and then, so if you would like, um, you can always rest your head on your left arm, but if that's generally not so comfortable for you, then you can choose to have a cushion or a pillow to place underneath your head. So let's begin lying on our backs. And feel what is the length of your right leg compared to your left leg? How do you feel the length of your right side compared to the length of your left side? Is that something that you also pay attention to? So the distance between your right buttock to your right shoulder or even the right side of your neck and head, how long is that compared to the, your left buttock to the left side of your shoulder, neck and head? And if you have any other way to check in with yourself, feel free to, to zoom in on that and be aware of that as well.
and very gently roll your head a little from one side to another and allow the movement to be slow that you can let it happen a bit longer through time and I go back to this very um, very calm and maybe common image of just waves in the ocean. So how can you make a small rolling of your head last a bit longer because it has this depth of the waves in the ocean, on a very calm ocean. Yeah. And just notice if it's easier to roll your head to the right or to the left at this moment. And once you felt that, please come and lie on your left side. So if you can, have your left arm long overhead on the floor and just rest your head on your left arm. But if you need to, you can always place a pillow on uh, underneath your head. Have your legs bent up so you're bent in your hip joints, your knees, so that your knees will be more or less in front of your hip joints at a 90 degree angle and see that you have approximately a 90 degree angle at your knees as well. And remember that these are guidelines, um, suggestions for exploration, but if it is much better for you to lie in a, a different way on your left side, then please modify that to your needs. So have your right hand just resting on the floor in front of you to give you a bit of stability. And can you just gently, so remembering, remembering the tiny movement we did of just lifting the heel of your hand off of the floor to start. So very um, subtly, can you lift your whole right leg or begin to lift your whole right leg, bent as it is, the entire right leg off of the left leg, or make it lighter, and then bring it back down. And rest your right leg again on your left, and do this a few times. And so it's, of course, with a lot of effort, you can just yank the, your right leg off of the floor, but see, that you make it a slower movement and you just, you're interested in what changes along the, your left side against the floor as you lift your right leg away from your left. Mm -hmm. Can you breathe as you continue to do this? Does your right leg feel heavy at this point? Does it feel already very light? So you want to lift it a bit like a shelf so that the right foot and the right knee would come away from the left leg at approximately the same time. Mm -hmm. And each time your right leg comes down, you just release it and then feel how you engage yourself to lift your right leg off of the left again. Okay. So stay on your left side, and now can you slowly lift just your right heel away from your left heel? Just enough so that you can slide a piece of paper between your heels, you know. So you lift your right heel a bit away from your left and then down. And what does that mean for your right big toe? So as you lift the right heel away from your left heel, that means that you're leaning more of the weight, you're transferring more of the weight onto 
your big toe of the right foot. Yeah. And do this gently breathing in. Do you feel a movement of your right lower leg? Does this movement remind you of maybe some previous lessons that you have done either here or in other Feldenkrais lessons? Yeah. Do you feel this movement go into your right thigh? Does it turn your right leg in the hip joint even? Okay. So now keep your right heel on the left heel and then can you begin to do the um, other movement of lifting the front of your right foot away from your left foot. So the front of your right foot will lift away from your left foot and then you come down. And what's different in terms of the movements in your lower leg, how your lower leg might be turning, rotating, spiraling. How is this movement felt in your pelvis? Is there any change along the ribs of your left side on the floor? As you lift the front of your um, right foot away from the left foot and you roll more of the weight onto your right heel and then stay lying on your left side and take a pause and now let's combine the two movements together so that once so you're lying on your left side for those who are joining us now we're lying on our left side your head is laying on your left arm, long left arm, or a pillow, and you have your right hand in front of you on the floor giving you some support. Legs are bent up. And you're just doing the simple movement of lifting your right heel off of the left heel, place it down gently, and then a little bit lift the front of your right foot, so the big toe of your right foot, away from the big toe of your left foot, and then place it down. And combining these movements, does it not feel like you're rocking your foot? Your right foot is rocking, heel up, which means that your big toe will go down. And then as the big toe comes up, you'll be rocking the weight onto the right heel. So the right foot is rocking, rolling, over the inside edge of your left foot. And do this in a leisurely way that makes you feel good. And listen to what that does to your lower leg, what that requires of your lower leg, the right lower leg. How do you feel the movement then happen in your right thigh, your pelvis, and continue listening up through your torso into your ribs, your right shoulder, your neck. Maybe you feel the movement all the way from your right foot through your skeleton all the way to your, your head. Or maybe not. So it's important to just see what is happening for you. And that's all that matters for now. Breathing. Okay. So let that go. And can you just place your right hand on, the, uh, on your right hip? So um, it's not really your right hip, but we call it the right greater trochanter. So on the right side of your pelvis, where the thigh bone is the top of your right thigh bone is just rest it there and go back a few times rocking your right foot so lifting once the right heel placing it down and then smoothly lifting the front of your right foot yeah 
and, and listen to your right hand that is resting on your right greater trochanter in the right side of your pelvis at the top of the right thigh and see, does, do you not feel movement there? Great. Once you felt that, return your right hand in front of you and can you go back to lifting your whole right leg off of your left and remember it can be a small movement, even better a small movement, and see did it get lighter just by doing that small movement of your right foot has it helped your right leg feel a bit lighter as you lift it off of the left and then bring it down. Wonderful. Please lie on your back and take a rest. Feel what might have changed uh, to your contact with the floor. How is the length of your right leg, your right side, compared to your left leg, your left side? And roll your head a bit from side to side, just enough to feel. Is your head rolling a bit easier to the right or a bit easier to the left? And then take a rest. Just have a lie on your back. Feel your breathing. Are you sensing the structure of your right leg and your left leg differently? Okay. Please come back onto your left side. So have your head resting on the pillow or ideally for this lesson um, on your long left arm. Knees are bent, the hips are bent, one foot, your right foot resting on top of the left foot. Mm -hmm. And begin to lift your whole right foot a few times away from your left foot but keeping the knees together and then place it back down. So you lift your right foot, make it light, and then bring it back down. Mm -hmm. And what's rolling here? Do you feel that you're rolling your right knee somehow over the left? that as you lift the right foot, you have to shift the weight more onto your right knee. Yeah. So it's a bit of, so your lower leg becomes a lever. This being your right foot, that's it. And what does this do to your pelvis, your spine, your ribs? And can you feel how that lifting your right foot a bit away from your left foot, that that also changes the, the weight distribution against your left side, the left ribs, the left side of your pelvis. Okay, so now just lift your right foot and keep it hovering over your left foot. And see, can you now begin, would you would, Either touch your right toe to your left toes or you would touch the right heel down to the left heel. What seems easier for you? And just do whichever is easier first. And I find it's easier for me to dip the toes downwards, to touch the left toes and then bring it back up. Yeah. And just stay with that for a bit. Feel how, again, you're turning your right lower leg to do this. And if you think about the bottom of your heel, does it help you clarify this movement, how you're doing it? And just bring your right foot down for a second, take a pause so that you can stay fresh and continue to listen with um, some sharpness. So again, lift your right foot 
a bit away from your left. And notice as you do this, so you keep the knees together. And as you do this, lifting your right foot away from your left, is it your heel that lifts first or do you lift both the heel and the right toe, right big toe at the same time? Or is it your right big toe that lifts first, which is easier, which feels lighter? And then keep your right foot now hovering over your left foot. And now try the other. If you, if you have been dipping your toes downwards to touch your right toes to your left toes, then now go with the right heel downwards and touching your left heel. Yeah. And just continue to breathe easily as you do this. Mm -hmm. And now alternate, keeping your right foot hovering over your left. Once can you touch the right toes to your left big toe and then um, so the right big toe will touch the left big toe, you lift it up and as you lift the big toe up then you can dip the right heel down. So again, you're rocking the inside edge of your right foot, but having your right foot hovering in the air above your left, just a bit. And feel how this turning of your right lower leg is influenced. It's, you feel it in the right knee, into your right hip. How does your pelvis and your chest even help you do this? Yeah. And feel the foot. If you think about the foot like this instrument I remember in kindergarten where there was sand or beans inside and you would tip it from side to side. So as you tip one end, you feel the beans go to the other side. And as soon as that finishes, you start smoothly tilting the beans to the other side. Yeah. Since so all the way up to your neck, do you feel movement there as well? Your chin. Great. Just bring your right foot down once again. Have a breather still lying on your left side. And go back to simply lifting your entire right leg off of the left a bit and then down. Any further changes? Wonderful. Come and lie on your back. And this is the great thing about teaching Feldenkrais, that I'm doing it as I'm explaining it, and I'm feeling um, the changes in my breathing from right to left as well. So see, how is your breathing now? What do you notice as um, something? What do you notice being different? OK. Maybe you also feel that there's a change in the right hip joint, the softness, the, the yeah, softness of your right hip joint compared to the left. So please return to your left side. So your right leg will be on top of your left, knees bent, hips bent, left arm long again, right hand standing somewhere in front of you on the floor to support you. And now, can you go back to lifting just your right foot away from your left foot and then come down? And I like to say, meditate on this. So you're again tuning into what's happening in the moment. What is the reality in your pelvis, in your rib cage, your chest, your neck, in order to help you lift your right? foot up. And where does the weight pour into as the right foot gets lighter as you lift it up? Okay, so the next time your right foot comes down, can you keep the right foot over your left foot and lift your right knee a little bit away from your left and see what happens to your right side in order to do this? 
Do you get longer on your right side? Does your pelvis roll a bit with your right sitting bone away from you? Your right hip doesn't move down away from your head. Do you roll backwards in your right hip to do this? How is it happening for you? And now begin to alternate. Lift once your right knee, and you place it down, and then the next time you lift your left knee, uh, your, your, sorry, you lift your right knee, and then you place it down, and then you lift your right foot. So we're still working with the right leg. Yeah. And how is your right ankle, your toes, can they stay um, soft, limp? Yeah. And as you lift the foot, see what is the, the first part to lift? And what is the first part to touch as you bring the right foot down? Great. Listening to the ribs on your right side. How do you find support from the left side against the floor? Mm -hmm. How's your right shoulder moving? Does your right shoulder move as you do this? Yeah. And what I like to do is also ask people to stay in one position, meaning stay with your right foot up, hang out here, and just make sure that you can breathe. And once you feel that your breathing finds housing, <laughs> finds the, the, the space to breathe with your right foot up, then place your right foot down and then bring your right foot uh, your right knee away from your left knee and then keep your right knee up for a little bit and then make sure that you can breathe here and then go back to rocking now your lower leg in this way lifting once the right foot and place it down then once lifting the right knee and see if it becomes better that you can track your breathing as you're doing this lovely Rest your right leg over your left. And another time, just once or twice, lift your right leg away from your left leg. Is it getting even better? Then come and lie on your back. So I'm hoping that you are feeling the um, pleasure in doing these smaller movements in this lesson, that you get to really, you put less on your plate by making a smaller movement, and therefore you can really appreciate the detail in every small movement that we do. Appreciate the detail of what everything else has to do the village of your whole self, as I like to call it, what the whole village has to do, how it has to shift in order for you to fulfill an intention. So by doing a smaller movement, you, you place less on your plate, so therefore you have more attention dedicated to what you're doing. Yeah. So please, um, Come on to your left side again. So we return to the same side, set yourself up the same way. Head, so for the people who are just joining now, we have our left arm long, and then we are resting the head over on our long left arm. But if that's uncomfortable, you can choose to have a pillow underneath your head. Then you have your legs bent up at the hips, at the knees. So, and then your right hand is in front of you just giving you some stability, um, uh, a nap position. Great. So with your right knee, can you think about sliding it forwards 
over your left knee a bit and then come back. And how little do you dare to do and still feel? So just meditate on sliding your right knee a bit forwards and then coming back. And so even if it's a small movement, you can prolong it. Yeah. How are you rolling in your pelvis? And do you feel how your pelvis is rolling over your, how there's movement in your left hip joint as well as the right hip joint? And it doesn't stop there. What's happening in your lower leg a bit, your ribs, your chest. And then take a pause and now slide your right knee a bit backwards. So the right knee comes backwards behind the left knee a bit again. And then go back to where you started. And feel this all along your right side, just listening, scanning a bit. Where else do you feel movement? Mm -hmm. And then go forwards and backwards, combining the two directions, making it nice and soft. Yeah, and your right foot just continues to stay resting over your left foot. And if you think about the body of your spine is, do you feel, so remember that your spine is not just one thin line, that your, your spine has body, has, um, has volume, has, yeah, um, dimension. And how is your spine moving with your knee as, it, as the right knee slides forwards and backwards? Okay. So, Take your right hand now, and can you hold just below your right kneecap? Mm -hmm. And keeping your right hand uh, holding your right underneath your right kneecap, the front of the, the shin bone, the top of the sh right shin bone. Now slide your right knee forwards and backwards, and allow your right knee to take your right arm for a ride your right arm and your right shoulder. And see how you begin to roll your whole torso forwards and back because you're sliding the right knee forwards and backwards, keeping your right hand attached to your right knee. Does your head roll as well? Just gentle movements. And then leave your right hand and can your right hand now come between your legs and hold onto the front of your left shin bone below the kneecap. So your right hand will now hold your um, left knee just under the left knee and then keep it fixed there and also now slide your right knee forwards and backwards, keeping a hold of your right hand underneath your left knee, so the bottom knee. Yeah. And try to also not move your right shoulder so much. So how do you feel this movement differently in your chest, between your shoulders, your pelvis? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and then just come and lie on your back for a second. Compare how your right side is lying on the floor to the left. Is this somehow benefiting maybe even your 
your jaw. Roll your head a little bit from side to side. And how is that feeling compared to when we first started? Since you're breathing. Then please return to your left side. Knees bent up. Hips are bent so your right your knees are bent up in front of your hips. Yeah. And now keeping this time bring your your right your whole right forearm on the floor and find the position where you can have the right elbow and the right hand on the floor. And without moving your um, your right forearm. And I, I learned this lesson from Larry Goldfarb, a fantastic film price trainer. And uh, he said, <laughs> you know, pretend that you have a very kind film Christ practitioner sitting on your <laughs> on your right forearm. So it doesn't move. And now slide your right knee forwards and backwards. Yeah. And see how that constraint is actually very kind because it helps you discover something between your ribs and your right shoulder blade. But also, you discover movement uh, in, in the thoracic region where most of the twisting in our spine happens. Yeah. And remember, the, the sliding forwards and backwards of your right knee doesn't have to be big it can be tender small tender even small and juicy yeah and as you do this movement what happens to your chest your chest could possibly be rolling a bit forwards and back underneath that right shoulder blade but does your chest also fold a bit in and open are you a bit um, extending and um, flexing in your chest as you do this. Very gentle. Mm -hmm. So leave your right leg as it is on your left and keeping your, your right forearm um, on the floor and especially your right elbow. So now can you go back to the movement of lifting once your right foot away from your left foot, place it down, and then lifting your right knee off of your left knee. So you are rolling, and this is my water bottle. You can think of your lower leg a bit like my water bottle. And then, so the water, you're rocking your lower leg, your right lower leg over your left, and you just feel, it's almost like you're pouring the water into one end and then the other end. And if you can't move your right forearm on the floor as you do this, what are you moving in your chest, in your spine, your pelvis? With limitations, um, we get to learn how to be creative and find possibility. Mm -hmm. Can you make this movement pleasurable? Great. And then now, just let that go. And can you come back? Uh, you can have your, your right hand standing on the floor in front of you. And just go back to lifting your right leg, your whole right leg, bent as it is, up away from your left and down. And has that become simpler, lighter, effortless? Yeah. Then just have your right leg resting over your left again and go back to rocking the boat of your foot. Lifting once your right heel away from the left heel, place it down, and then lifting the big toe of your right foot off 
of your left foot and just go back and forth. And are these movements also more fluid, more articulate than when you first started? Wonderful. Lie on your back, take a final rest and feel the difference between your right and left sides. Mm -hmm. Then please slowly roll to one side and come to sit for a bit. Mm -hmm. And then when you're ready, slowly make your way up to stand. Yeah. And are you standing more over your right foot, your right leg at this moment? Or more on your left? Do you also feel a difference in the length between the, your right side and left side in standing? And how is it now to just look right and then look to your left? Are you getting power from the floor, from one foot more easily? And please have a walk around. And see how is your right foot, your whole right side supporting you? How is the right side mobilizing also differently to your left side? So we, from the right leg, the right foot, are you benefiting maybe in your neck, your shoulders? Mm -hmm. Is there a different texture or feeling, perception of your right side compared to your left side? And is it just within yourself or do you also perceive the world around you, the right and the left of your external um, environment a bit differently? So yeah, I think we will leave it here today. Um, so it's, it's always nice to do these one-sided lessons. So it, it's very clear for your brain what has changed, what has become better. And um, if you're, just see if you can hang out with this for a bit. Maybe don't drive um, maybe immediately after. Um, lessons in, in general and just take your time to notice yourself and if you are interested in exploring the left side see what you remember from the right side or you could go to uh, the movement and creativity YouTube channel or just um, look out for this um, lesson recording in the move create practice Facebook group so that you can use the right side and translate it, uh, translate the instructions for your left side. Um, yeah, have fun working with yourself and going with this cottony, um, small uh, movements that can lead to some resonant discoveries. And yeah, I would love to hear how you uh, experience this lesson um, what has happened for you. So always feel free to share um, your
your experience uh, in your comments and uh, I look forward to another Wednesday with you next week. Have a great rest of your day and uh, yeah, take care everyone. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.